Okay, the next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 13487 in the name of Marie McNair on action at mesothelioma uh, action, uh, day 2024. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I'd invite members wishing to participate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible and I invite Marie McNair to open the debate around seven minutes. Ms McNair. Thank you, President Officer. I'm pleased to lead this debate for a third year. Uh, this issue is of huge importance to my constituents, so as often as I can, I will continue to raise asbestos-related issues and seek truth and justice. I thank my parliamentary colleagues for their support in signing the motion in my name. Asbestos campaigners deserve cross-party support, so I call on Labour, Liberal Democrat and ALIPA members to sign the motion too. Mesophiloma is a cancer usually caused by exposure to asbestos fibres. I congratulate Action MISO and all the support groups up and down the country for their efforts in raising awareness of this disease. As part of this, members of the public are encouraged to go blue for MISO. I think that in this regard, given the UK general election is happening, it is just as well MISO Day is on the 5th of July and not before. Can I welcome the Clybank Asbestos Group to our gallery and thank them for supporting today's event. The group has been assisting asbestos victims for over 30 years and have campaigned tirelessly for truth and justice. They are there and they are always there for my constituents at a time of greatest need. I thank them for everything they do and cannot stress enough that I am on their side. Unfortunately, since the last MISO debate, the group have seen the passing of two members who were instrumental in the tenacious fight for truth and justice, Bob Dickey and Hope Robertson. I thank all MSPs who have signed my recent Scottish Parliament motion, paying tribute to them. It was an honour to present copies of the motions to the families on International Workers' Memorial Day. Sadly, just this month, Bob Dickey's wife, Isabel, also passed away. I know the Clybank Asbestos Group were heartbroken by this news, and I am too. I knew Isabel well, and although Bob is famous for his role as the Clybank convener during the UCS working, it was no surprise to read recently in the book Crisis on the Clyde by Jack McGill about Isabel making up the pay packets for the workers with money from the fighting fund. As the MSP for Clybank and Mogai, it is right that I highlight industry on the Clyde as part of this debate, because the unwanted legacy of that industrial heritage for Clybank is extremely high levels of mesothelioma in our town. Clybank was once described as the mesothelioma capital of Europe due to having the highest death rates. More recently, health and safety executive statistics showed that the local government area covering Clybank has the second highest male mesothelioma death rate in the UK, showing also that we have the highest female mesothelioma death rate in Scotland and the fourth highest in the UK. John Brown Shipyard, the Singer Sewing Machine Factory and Turner's Asbestos Cement Company employed many of our, our uh, folks from our town. Unfortunately, these industries prioritised profit and production over the safety and welfare of workers. Testimonies from workers from the asbestos factory in the book Lethal Work by Ronald Johnston and Arthur McIver make horrendous reading, with one worker noting, when you're in the door of Turner's asbestos, there was a factory act with all the stuff. The only problem was that you couldn't see through it with a layer of asbestos cement on the glass. And the risk to workers' families is clear too, the, with the wife of one of the workers saying about asbestos dust, I used to take his overalls and take them out to the stairs and brush them before I could wash them. The irony of the NHS hospital now being located on the site of the old asbestos factory is not lost on my Clybank constituents. It is no wonder I support the Scottish Hazards Group's call for the devolution of health and safety, as even now legislation needs strengthened. We need to respond to the crime of asbestos exposure in several ways. Cancer research points out that only 4 in 10 people diagnosed with mesothelioma in Scotland survive their disease for one year or more. Search for new treatments is vital, so I thank them and the Scottish Mesothelioma Network for the work they are doing on clinical trials, early detection and better treatment. 
Cancer research highlights mesothelioma can take more than 40 years to develop. And for me, this raise, raises big concerns about the younger ages of people who are now being diagnosed with mesothelioma. And often these people with no evidence of industrial workplace history. I have raised a case in Parliament from the asbestos group involving a woman in her 30s who feels exposure happened in the school she attended. There is growing evidence to support that asbestos exposure across a range of public and other buildings is the cause of contracting asbestos cancers. That is why I have called for the phase removal of asbestos from the built environment, starting with schools. The Cabinet Secretary for Education has agreed to meet with me and the Climate Asbestos Group about this. We must deal with asbestos on all fronts and support those diagnosed with mesothelioma and other asbestos-related illness in a way that helps when needed. This includes a fair and just social security and compensation system. It is a disgrace that despite being in place since 1948, the Industrial Injury Scheme has been left largely unreformed and decades have been wasted to include other asbestos-related cancers and end the exclusion of women from entitlement. DWP closures have removed expertise and caused delays that are penalising those with mesothelioma when time is unfortunately not on their side. We must work together to ensure that the new Employment Injury Assistance Scheme is designed to provide wider, more compassionate and quicker support currently denied to many within the UK scheme. Also, the potential to be denied justice because of a three-year time bar has no place in a just compensation system. The Scottish Law Commission report on this issue, due to be published very soon, can provide solutions to this injustice. I have sought assurances in Parliament that the Scottish Government act quickly to implement any recommendations and draft legislation proposed. The current position of some asbestos victims losing out must be ended once and for all. In conclusion, we must keep going and make more progress. Compassion and demand for truth and justice should drive the way forward, and any other approach should and will not be forgiven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms McNair. We now move to the open debate. I call first Alexander Stewart to be followed by Bill Kidd. Around four minutes, Mr Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am pleased to speak in this debate, which marks Action Methyospilioma Day uh, 2024, and I thank uh, the member, uh, Marie McNeen, for once again bringing this very important uh, member's debate to the Chamber for the third year in a row. This is a rare and aggressive form of cancer and is one of the most important issues I have dealt with in my role as co-convener of the cross-party group on lung health, along with my fellow co-convener, Emma Harper. I therefore welcome uh, the members and have the opportunity to speak on this issue uh, before the Action Day on the 5th of July. Effects from this disease have, we already heard, householders and individuals across Scotland and across the United Kingdom, but certain areas have historically been far more effective to this disease. Uh, for example, uh, statistics published by the Health and Safety Executive show that my own part of my own region of Fife is among one of those areas that has a high preference of this disease. And we've seen that over 500 people uh, caused the condition uh, uh, since 1981. Uh, and that is a, a large amount of individuals to, to deal with. The help and advice provided by support groups who operate uh, in communities right across Scotland is key to taking on this issue. Uh, Marie McNeen spoke about the individuals from Clyde Bank and I also uh, am delighted to see that they've come here this afternoon uh, from their bestos group uh, in her constituency and I'd like to take the opportunity to pay tribute to what they do, uh, the fantastic work that they do uh, in bringing uh, forward and, and supporting individuals. Likewise, within my own region, I pay tribute to Breathe Easy uh, Clack Manninshire, who are based in Alloa, who support the work of the British Lung Foundation and provide services for those facing lung-related health issues. Uh, 
Just last year, they launched the Befriending Service, uh, which allows them to reach out to individuals who are unable to attend uh, many of their sessions in person. But that gives them the opportunity, uh, if they are housebound, to have that connection and to be involved. It is all too often uh, that sufferers feel that they uh, are on their own, and it is important for as many people as they can to support, even if that is just a phone call away, to try and give that moral support, depending on how they condition, and they are not on their own. Uh, we know that the disease does not just affect victims' physical health, it also pays toll on a mental well-being as well, presiding officer, and the support and empathy that the small, dedicated organisations provide in towns and cities right across Scotland is therefore vitally important uh, to fight against this disease. Presiding officer, in an increasing awareness of, of the disease and the effects, it is very important that we have uh, initiatives like the Action Day. Uh, too often we hear stories of individuals who do not speak out uh, or do not seek help uh, because they dismiss some of the, uh, the pains or they dismiss some of their uh, symptoms as not being of, of a serious nature. Uh, and then they find that uh, it is too late uh, to get things done and to progress things. And this Parliament has a role to play in increasing that awareness and showing that we do that. How we must always continue to advocate for the policies that can better protect those uh, from asbestos exposure uh, and continue to educate uh, the public on the dangers of the condition. There are many steps that need to be taken and put in place, such as better support for patients, more focused research and improved safety regulations. These will only happen if Parliament continues uh, to make a voice. Uh, and as I say, and I pay tribute to Mary again for being one of the voices that is saying that and doing that year on year. So in conclusion, Presiding Officer, I welcome this debate here today and the members continue. I join with others in pushing forward and pushing for further action on the issue because it is important to each and every one of us that we protect and support our constituents in our regions and our constituencies from this awful condition. Thank you. Thank you. I now call Bill Kidd to be followed by Carol Mock in around four minutes. Uh, Mr Kidd. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. <clears throat> it is, as always, a privilege to speak in today's debate to mark action mesothelioma day. Um, I must pay tribute to my colleague, Mary McNair, for bringing today's important debate and for continuing to highlight the issue over years and for her continued dedication and support on this issue. As the motion states, mesothelioma is a rare cancer that is usually caused by exposure to asbestos. And although the dangers associated with exposure were first discovered at the beginning of last century, it was not until the 1950s and 60s that the link between asbestos exposure and mesothelioma was firmly established. Since then, there has been progress in the dedication of groups such as Action on Asbestos, Clydebank, Asbestos Group and other dedicated campaigners um, have been invaluable to this progress. And I commend and thank all those involved uh, for all their work. I also thank the various Scottish governments who have committed much to tackle mesothelioma and the effect it has on all those influenced by it. As we have entered this century, our understanding of mesothelioma has evolved and something which was once solely associated with the heavy industries is now predominantly seen in the construction industry where joiners, electricians, plumbers, painters and labourers all used or were in proximity to those using asbestos in the building of houses, schools and hospitals. Another worrying trend is beginning to emerge and the asbestos materials used to build those houses, schools and hospitals became damaged and degraded pretty quickly. And now the occupiers and users of those buildings are paying the price. Couple this with the historical growth, and it's a good thing in that way, of women in the workplace. But sadly, that has seen, particularly in education, we are seeing a rise in female cases of mesothelioma and other asbestos illnesses. As I understand it, Thompson solicitors are currently investigating cases for 76 women, with eight of those cases being for teachers who have uh, the illness or who have died from mesothelioma. There are also cases relating to exposure of tenants within local authority housing. Therefore, it is imperative that these new trends are taken into account when further developing the government's strategy towards dealing with people affected by this illness. And I would urge the Minister to acknowledge this in her remarks, please. I would also like to ask the Minister for her views on the worrying news that the UK Indus Industrial Injuries Advisory Committee 
have proposed new recommendations for those suffering from pneumoconiosis. If the incoming UK Government adopt these recommendations, it will have a devastating effect on those suffering from asbestosis illnesses, who will see a possible 14 per cent reduction in their industrial injuries disablement benefit. I am sure she will agree with me that we need to do more, not less, in supporting victims and their families who are suffering through no fault of their own. For, as the Cabinet Secretary has said in her ministerial foreword to the next steps involved in the Scottish Government's plans towards delivering an employment injury assistance benefit, the Scottish Government has, since 2016, delivered 14 new Social Security benefits, seven of which are completely new, and established Social Security Scotland as a new public service founded on the principle of treating people with dignity, fairness and respect something which all of those suffering from mesothelioma and other related illnesses most certainly deserve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Kidd. I now call Carol Mochin to be followed by Stuart McMillan around four minutes. Ms Mochin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I begin by thanking Marie McNair again this year for bringing forward this important debate and, on behalf of Scottish Labour, welcome Action Mesothelioma Day 2024, which we will be marking next Friday. As we have heard, this is a rare and indeed hard to treat form of cancer. As stated in the motion, despite asbestos being banned over a quarter of a century ago, many worked in environments where it was present and it can still be found in buildings across Scotland today. And as others have said, um, this needs to be taken very seriously by government. And each government, whether at UK level or at Scottish level, must do all that they can to make sure that we get rid of this A. Eh? With almost 3,000 new cases diagnosed every year in the UK and 200 in Scotland, it remains of utmost importance that we raise awareness of the symptoms of this illness and encourage people to be cautious and have their symptoms checked, because identifying this illness quickly, as with other forms of cancer, can prolong life. Presiding officer, of course, it cannot go unmentioned that mesothelioma is in many ways an industrial illness. Asbestos was prominent in mining, um, and it is therefore not a surprise that we see former coal miners and their families rightly asking for protection and compensation right up till today. As the impacts of the environment in which they worked became more apparent, they realised the connection, as others have said. And I fully support the calls of miners and their families who played such an important role in this country's industrial heritage and risked their own lives in often unsafe environments. Miners and their families really created spirits within their communities, and it is right that we stand with them in times of illness, particularly illness related to the work that they did. Moving on, I want to emphasise a key part of the motion brought forward today by Marie McNair, the focus on investing in research. Improving our knowledge base and understanding of an illness is the only way we can truly tackle it. Mesothelioma, like other cancers, is, co is a complex illness with tiny fibres getting into the lungs, damage them over time, and this is, as we have heard, due to exposure to asbestos. As we mark this action day, we must redouble our efforts across the Chamber to invest in research and understanding in the hope that we can effectively support those affected by this terrible disease. So further to this, I do share the members' interest in the significant grant given from Cancer Research UK to the University of Glasgow to conduct studies to further understand why it can take as long for exposure to develop into this cancer. The research work is necessary, and I think alongside efforts in this place and the work that we have heard from so many of our communities, those key groups working uh, with asbestos sufferers, many of whom we have heard are in the gallery today, Related to this illness, we can effectively raise awareness of symptoms and hopefully improve outcomes in the long term. In concluding, Sign Officer, I once again thank Marie McNair for bringing this debate forward. This Action Day cannot just be a one-off event, as has been said. 
We as MSPs must come together and work together. We must take a united position in the Chamber and work to make proper developments in research to support those who are already suffering from the condition, but also to make sure that we tackle those really big issues that the governments of this country need to look at in terms of the long-term development to ensure that we reduce and indeed eradicate this dreadful disease. I commit my party to those efforts and look forward to hearing other members' debates in the Chamber today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Mochan. I now call Stuart McMillan to be followed by Richard Leonard. Around four minutes, Mr McMillan. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. First of all, I refer members to my Register of Members' Interests, as I am a lifetime honour member of Action on Asbestos. But I congratulate Mary McNair on securing this important members' debate. And as she highlighted, asbestos-related conditions, in this case mesothelioma, are still highly prevalent in society. And mesothelioma has no cure, and it does not solely affect people working in our past traditional industries. And the Cancer Research UK briefing for today was interesting, but also very helpful. I'm going to quote a few things from it throughout my contribution. But the first couple of points I think are really important to put on the record uh, are that only around 4 in 10, that's 44.3 per cent of people diagnosed with mesothelioma in Scotland, survive their disease for one year or more. So the search for new treatments is vital. And the second point uh, which I thought was really important for today, was that the, the UK currently endures the highest incidence of mesothelioma worldwide, with the disease more prevalent in men uh, due to occupation-related exposure and rates significantly higher in the west coast of Scotland than the Scotland average, with around 100 of the 200 new cases in Scotland each year in the region. Now, as I said in the debate last year, I will never understand why there was such a laissez-faire attitude from governments with regards to health and safety in society when it came to asbestos. Now, I recognise the importance of marking days, such as Action Mesothelioma Day, to remind us that there is still a lot more to be done in that area. And this is particularly important in my constituency of Greenock and Inverclyde. And once again, as the Cancer Research UK briefing indicates, and I quote, that there was widespread industrial use of asbestos between 1950 and 1980, particularly in Glasgow and the surrounding area as the material was manufactured in towns such as Clydebank and used, in, many, sorry, and used in, in much heavy industry like shipbuilding, which the River Clyde was famed for. Now, my area um, has been built upon shipbuilding and heavy engineering. Uh, and I mean, over my 17 years as a, as a parliamentarian, uh, I've dealt with a number of constituents who have had asbestos-related conditions. And it's, something, it's, a, it's an issue that I've raised in the parliament in the past, as people will be very much aware. Uh, and it's... Uh, Bill Kidd uh, touched upon his contribution uh, regarding um, some of the health and safety aspects of this. But the fact that, uh, that we are still talking about this in the Chamber, in Parliament, in society today, uh, when um, it's, uh, it's actually quite, it's quite sad, it's quite disheartening, and it's actually really quite frustrating. And, uh, and so I think that when it comes to the point of the amount of investment that's going in, um, as uh, the Cancer Research UK briefing indicates, a couple of examples which I'll come on to. But with that investment that's going in, trying to find um, solutions, trying to find uh, cures to make life better for people with asbestos-related conditions, I think that is absolutely crucial. Uh, and the more of that that can go in, the better. Now, I did indicate I've touched upon uh, I've assisted constituents. Uh, but I do also want to put on record the long outstanding work of action on asbestos for their invaluable work helping many people across the country. Now, their work and campaigning has led uh, the way in providing support for people with asbestos-related conditions and also obtaining financial recompense for people. Now, in the, the 11th programme of law reform uh, by the Scottish Law Commission, and this was touched upon last year in the, in the speech as well, in the debate, um, now that report was put out for consultation in 2022, uh, and the, the report is now due to be published by the SLC by mid-2024. I suspect that uh, PERDA rules have probably got in the way uh, in terms of that being published. But that's something that I'm looking forward to reading that, uh, their report in this, in this area regarding, uh, regarding personal injuries. It's something I, I met Lady Payton um, about this and spoke to her about it, because I know it's something that she was really interested in and actually was very supportive of. Now, President Officer, our generation, our generation owes past generations for their efforts that they put in to build and rebuild the communities that we have today. 
And so it's, uh, it really is up to us as a, as a society, not just in Scotland or the UK, but elsewhere as well, to actually do whatever we can to help people. So once again, I do want to thank Marie McNair for securing this hugely important debate uh, on action basically on my day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr McMillan. And I call the final speaker in the open debate, uh, Richard Leonard. Around four minutes, please. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I remind members of my voluntary register of trade union interests? And can I thank Marie McNair for once again this year tabling this motion for debate? It's become something of a custom for her to do so and something of a custom for this debate to take place every year as one of the final acts on the final day of Parliament before we go into summer recess. Uh, but a part of that custom is missing this year because Bob Dickey is sadly no longer with us. One of the outstanding leaders of the remarkable and historic Upper Clyde shipbuilders working in the half of a century that followed, Bob Dickey never gave up on either the conviction of his principles or the depth of his determination and nowhere more so than in his tireless campaigning for truth and for justice for asbestos and mesothelioma sufferers and their families. And I am reminded of E.P. Thompson, who said on the passing of Raymond Williams, it is as if, he wrote, a fixed point in the landscape has suddenly dissolved. And that is what it feels like for many of us today. One of the certainties which Bob was so very clear about was this. We live in a class-based society. There is a class divide. We have an economic system based on the legalised right for those who own the wealth to exploit those who create the wealth in order to enrich themselves. And one facet of this is the negligent exposure of working women and men to toxic hazards, to deadly risks, to killer diseases at work. Mesothelioma is by any measure one of the most awful ways to die. Survival rates are poor. Death follows quickly after diagnosis. Which is why next Friday, on Action Mesothelioma Day, we will pay tribute to Action on Asbestos, to the Clyde Bank Asbestos Group, and to all of those campaigners for all of the work they do all year round. But we will also remember our families, our friends, our comrades and all of those we have known who have been lost to this terrible disease. It is because of them that we keep fighting on and there remains much unfinished business. Most recently, we have seen the family of the late Robert Crozier being forced to challenge his former employer, Scottish Power UK PLC, in court battle after court battle, despite having previously settled a damages claim for pleural plaques and asbestosis in 2014, and so despite accepting fault and admitting negligence, Scottish Power has been obstructing the claim of Robert Crozier's immediate relatives to damages for the mesothelioma which he died of in 2018. So just a few days ago, the inner house of the Court of Session under Lord Carloway, refused Scottish Power's latest appeal in this case. So I say to Scottish Power from the Scottish Parliament, why are you resisting? Stop serving the narrow interests of your shareholders and the insurance industry and start serving the wider interests of your workers, their families and the ends of justice. And I say to the Scottish Government, Get on with the Law Commission's recommendation. Sweep away the single action rule once and for all. Stop leaving it up to families like the Croziers to take on a multinational corporation and an army of lawyers simply to get what they are due. Finally, presiding officer, a week today, people will go to the polls. It will be a chance to overturn the culture of deregulation to strengthen the rights of working people, to repeal anti-trade union laws and to extend the power of health and safety at work. That is what is at stake and I hope it's a chance that people will seize. 
Thank you. Uh, we now move to the closing speech. I invite uh, Jenny Min to respond to the debate. Minister, around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I too would like to thank my colleague Marie McNair for bringing this motion to the Chamber today and recognise the work she does to support those living with mesothelioma to seek truth and justice. I also recognise the work that Alexander Stewart and Emma Harper in the Cross Party Group for Lung Health does in this area as well. And I also wish to acknowledge the valuable contributions um, my colleagues have shared today. Ms Beatrice. Beatrice Wisher. I thank the Minister for giving way. I wonder if I could uh, take this opportunity to um, join others in congratulating Marie McNair in bringing this important debate to the Chamber and to offer the support of Scottish Liberal Democrats to the action this, I can't even say it, Missy, to the action day. Thank you. Minister. Um, I, I thank Beatrice Wishart, Wishart for her contribution and I think it is um, clear um, the fact that this is the third year that Marie McNair has brought this really underlines the importance um, of continuing to raise awareness and keeping um, pressure on um, to ensure that um, those living with this and their families are supported properly. I think I may have said this last year, but I was first uh, introduced to MISO, and I can't say it either, so I'll just say MISO, um, by my husband, who was making a documentary for BBC Scotland um, based in Clyde Bank. Um, and the stories and the experiences that he came home with is something that has um, stayed with me um, for a number of years, almost three decades. On behalf of the Scottish Government, I recognise all those who are affected by this type of cancer, not just the individuals themselves who are diagnosed, but also their loved ones. Adjusting to a cancer diagnosis is never easy, and this can be especially true for rarer cancers that can leave individuals feeling isolated and worried at an already very distressing time. I would therefore like to thank the third sector organisations and groups that provide valuable information, help and support to anyone affected by MISO and asbestos related conditions. The importance of uh, the MISO UK's annual action day to raise much needed awareness of this cancer cannot be understated and I'm delighted that the Scottish Government will be going blue for MISO by lighting up St Andrew's House and Victoria Quay. I also want to mention special thanks to the Clyde Bank Asbestos Group, who I'm very pleased have been able to join us today, and also pass on my heartfelt condolences for the loss of their key activists. But I know that you will continue in their name with them sitting on your shoulders. I'd also like to thank um, the work of the Less Survivable Cancers Task Force and note the work of Alexander Stewart's group in Al Alloa. As I've said, the work of third sector community and social care partners is absolutely critical in supporting those affected by MISO alongside our NHS. They are also vital in supporting and signposting the work of the Scottish uh, MISO network. The network works in partnership with Macmillan Cancer Support, MISO UK and NHS Scotland and is made up of a team of clinicians from across Scotland who collaborate to share best practice and provide high quality clinical care, information and support. The network ensures all patients have equitable access to potentially life-changing clinical trials where treatment options are otherwise so limited. Widespread exposure to asbestos in the past is known to be a major contributing factor to developing MISO and I note the contributions um, from all members who have reflected on that. As well as seeking to prevent exposure to asbestos, which has been banned in the UK since 1999, the Scottish Government remains committed to ensuring that appropriate medical care is in place for those who have been affected by as asbestos exposure. We also ensure that individuals have appropriate rights to compensation. And in response to Bill Kidd's note um, about um, the uh, Industrial Injuries Advisory Council, which is a UK government body, and Scotland does have separate legislation to support people affected by asbestos. Scottish Government would expect the UK government to consider fully the impact that any consequences could have if there is a change in recommendations that affect those on industrial injuries dis dis disablement benefit. 
and the Scottish Government is committed to ensuring that our replacement benefit, employment injury assistance, better meets the needs of disabled people in Scotland while protecting current payments, which is, as always, our utmost priority. While delivering a fully modernised benefit will take time, our consultation, which closed this week, is an important first step in the wider reform of the UK scheme. In the meantime, we continue to monitor ongoing areas of research by the UK Advisory Council. The law in relation to secondary exposure has developed over recent years, recent decades, and we are encouraged to see that those affected are increasingly recognised. Where existing asbestos remains, there are licences required to work with it, and strict control me measures are used, including personal protective equipment such as respir respirators. Although these preventative policies that are now in place are positive, unfortunately, the reality is that more individuals will continue to develop miso, miso you want me, um, due to the prolonged period between initial exposure and diagnosis. And we expect to see a rise in the number of cases in Scotland in years to come, which is why, as um, Marie McNair and Carol Mochan and others all highlighted, um, I welcome to the investment of £2.1 million pounds from Cancer Research UK awarded to the University of Glasgow, which will fund research on how exposure to asbestos can go on to cause um, meso years later. It is hoped that continuing research will help improve our understanding of this cancer, make it easier to detect and treat it earlier before symptoms appear, and offer better treatments um, and the quality of life to those diagnosed. Our 10-year stra cancer strategy is a focus on preventing more cancers, detecting them earlier and improving outcomes with a particular focus on the less survivable cancers. Over the next 10 years, our strategic aim is to improve cancer survival and provide excellent, equitably accessible care. I would like to offer my sincere thanks to the members for their contributions in today's debate and to all organisations who offer vital support services to those affected. I support action to um, Mesothelioma Day 2024 in raising the profile of it to drive research and awareness of this cancer. As Alexander Stewart said, we need to advocate to protect. The Scottish Government remains committed to improving outcomes for people affected by all types of cancer. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. That concludes the debate on Action Mesothelioma uh, Day 2024. There will be a brief pause before we move to the final debate uh, to allow front benches to change. <laughs>